Hi friends, welcome to the Outer Limits, where oh, you have control over your television set. <laughs> no, I'm just working on one of my amplifiers here again, and I was running some tests on it, and I thought I would just share it with you, kind of what I do here with these things. Um, this is the amplifier I've been working on now. I uh, got it running and it seems to be running pretty nice. This one's more powerful than the one I had in my other video. Um, it uses two uh, big 6L6s for power output tubes and then they run a plate voltage at 425 volts in here so she really can get up some power then. So I was just testing some of my used tubes I have around here and doing a little bit of checking the frequency response on the amplifier and it seems to be doing real good so far what I'll do here is uh, pause this and see how it's working and then we'll be back well I'm back again and I just kinda want to explain a little bit about what I'm doing here um, I have a what they call a frequency generator. This equipment's kind of old, but for audio work, you don't need the newest equipment if you got a little knowledge of what to do with the old equipment. Um, right now, what this generator is doing is making a sine wave. This is what we see right here on the oscilloscope. And right now, this wave is at 104 cycles per second, and each cycle is started right here and ends right here so it makes a complete all the way positive and to the zero reference line then all the way negative and up back to the zero line again and that would be considered one cycle so if you get 60 of those and happening in a second it's 60 cycles and 15,000 in a second it's 15,000 cycles so it's pretty straightforward and as I vary this you can see the higher the frequency goes the closer and closer the cycles get together. And what we're seeing here is the output of this amplifier running through a load resistor that I have in my bench because if I had it hooked to the speaker this one has some real power. But what I'm demonstrating here is um, what I'm looking for is these output tubes work in what we call a push-pull configuration. One of them will take through a phase inverter, one of them will amplify the top part of the wave. And then on the pole cycle, or whatever you want to call it, the other tube will take over and do the bottom wave. And they both have to come back together at the zero line, make a perfect reproduction of the input signal. And these two tubes are matched up pretty good, even though they're old. Um, these old ones look cool, that's the only reason I put them in here. They aren't necessarily any more powerful than any of these newer style in on the bench. But I have brand new tubes, but I don't want to use those because of when I'm working on them, because if something goes wrong and I roast the tube, that would kind of uh, hurt <laughs> for a nice word to say. So anyway, what you see here, this amplifier is giving us a nice clean signal coming through. Uh, if they do clipping and turn it up real loud or if you have a problem it might be a straight line here a rounded line here you might have squiggly lines in between if it's distorted and this one's looking pretty good I mean there's going to be some differences are acceptable but when they're real drastic you'll hear it with your ears if there's a problem and one thing you'll notice here is the gain now here's the low frequency like bass I think we can hear it on the camera as the frequency goes higher you'll notice the gain well here I'll go way down I'm gonna have to turn it up a little bit here oh, now I'm off the scale I can readjust that here on the scope this is an old scope I've got better ones down in my man cave but anyway I just wanted to show you see the bass becomes real powerful and as the signal increases in frequency the output is dropping because the peak to peak is the voltage what's coming out of the amplifier so when they talk about peak to peak power they're talking about the peak to the peak of these sine waves and we really only use a, a RMS value I think is around 0.7 or something of this I have 
right now, I can't remember. But anyway, as the frequency increases, you'll see the gain of the amplifier. It gets less and less because this is right across the output here of the amplifier. Of course, that kind of hurts your ears, and it'll go go much higher, but I don't want to do that and torture you. And you can see as the frequency drops back down again, the gain's starting to increase. And we get down to the bass, you can see the huge increase in gain. And that's pretty typical for a tube amplifier of this type. And that's one of the reasons that they characteristically can drive such a smooth and powerful bass. And because if you had a linear amplifier that went straight across the board with its voltage gain, the high frequencies would rip the, your eardrums out. So they kind of make filter circuits to help curve them. And then on the tube amplifiers, these used iron core transformers. And the frequency response wasn't the best. You know, it was the, high, the higher frequencies like uh, the powered iron ferrite core transformers that they have nowadays. And so you tend to get more gain in high frequencies with solid state amplifiers, amongst many reasons. Um, I'm going to see how this is working because my camera kind of went dark here. Okay, we're back again. And you can hear how low the frequency goes. I've kind of, I just got it connected to this small speaker in this cabinet. And then there's a load resistor inside of my workbench here that's absorbing all the power from the amplifier. Kind of sounds like me singing, huh? <laughs> but anyway, I, I really like this signal coming out of here. She looks pretty clean. I've seen some pretty uh, rough ones. And of course then um, I have equipment here for that I different equipment I use to work on them. This is my variable power supply here. It starts out at zero volts and can run up to 120. So when I start working on these amplifiers, I typically plug them in there and switch this over to adjustable, which is an isolated power supply, which is above ground. I won't get too technical, but the guys that work on the equipment know what I'm talking about. And that way I can bring the voltage up slowly to the amplifier and if there's any problems I can see smoke coming out before it does too much damage and it also with these electrolytic capacitors as they get older they're kind of like a battery and you don't want to hit them real hard and real fast if they haven't been on for 10 years but these are doing pretty good um, I went through this chassis and changed some components and hang on here I'll flip around its side and show you some things underneath. It's kind of interesting on the bottom side of these amplifiers compared to the new equipment nowadays. Um, this is all hand wired obviously. I think this amplifier was probably built in uh, mid 60s. I don't have an exact date on it but just looking at the type of work they did and the parts they used. Um, what I replaced, I replaced this, had to rewire all this here and these when I change the filter capacitors and I try to do my best to get everything back to the way it was at the factory as far as neatness and good clean solder joints another reason too that this has a lower gain on the high frequency end is they used larger capacitors in here for coupling capacitor larger microfarad values and those are great for bass and low end frequencies but they don't pass high frequencies very well so this amplifier was built to give you a nice smooth bass in your living room. This was an original high fidelity home amplifier for somebody that wanted to rock and roll really loud. <laughs> but they made quite an involved tone control circuit here with a loudness control, tapered volume controls, so that as you increase the volume, the, the bass and treble that you set on the controls will remain pretty constant as it goes up and they used all kinds of clever things in the circuit too uh, to give it a little better tone. It sounds really nice on the big speaker but I didn't want to take it inside right now. It's raining out. So I'm just doing this video to show you a little bit about it. What I'm doing here and I guess that kind of sums it up for the moment. 
and I want to get back to work here. So I'll see, take a look at this and see how it turned out.